you got. So that they are doing precisely what you're doing. Ah. It's that with it. So you had a series of friends that were also ham operators that you spoke to prior to flights and said, we want to fly it on this particular pattern. Will you be ready? And at this particular time, these are the signals I want you to send to the craft. And is that correct? That's correct. Now, how far away? You, you would be based uh, basically in the Mortimer area, yes. correct? And now, uh, which say you were going to Cornwall. Did you have somebody stationed in Cornwall? Uh, the, no, yes, the Air Force people wanted to check whether this model, which I was claiming speed, was true. So what they did, they came to me and said, look, we're going to get two helicopters. We're going to fit a boom with uh, cameras, which Germany are making for us. We're going to hire two pilots at 60 pounds per hour to film the whole thing. Okay, before you go on now, we're talking about two helicopters. In what year are we now? Look at that, 1965. Okay, in 65, the mid-60s, yeah. two helicopters. Now, this event where you're going to actually try to measure both the speed and get photographs and get a lot of data based on a particular flight that you're trying to set up, is that correct? Right. Okay, now go on. Two helicopters and what happens? Well, we set the date for go, and the, the beauty about this, remember, I'm in the back shed at the house you filmed in Mortimer. That's in the film. We yeah. can see that in the yeah. John Searle story. And okay. I, I'm operating it from there. And uh, when they told me they were ready, I could start. And I said, well, let me know when it reached 15 miles high. Three minutes later, they would say, yeah, you can turn, you can turn. So I switched it to go to Cornwall, where another unit's waiting. So three minutes later, they were ringing me again. Turn it, turn it back. You passed the point. Okay, let's let's stop here because this is amazing. Now, from Mortimer at your home, three minutes it takes to go 15 miles high? Yep. Three minutes, 15 miles of climb. Yep. And then three more minutes from 15 miles directly overhead over to Cornwall, which is roughly how far away from where you are? Uh, 200-odd uh, miles away. 200-odd miles, yep. and it's traveling 200-odd miles in three minutes. Three minutes, yep. And this must have been astounding to you, was it not? Uh, to me, I knew it went fast. You knew it went it, fast. Yeah, it was a stand, uh, well, it was a shock to the uh, film people who expected to see something slowly move ah. and slow it down. So it wasn't slow at all. It it literally launched yep. at a at a high rate yep. in three minutes at yep. 15 miles. Now, where are these helicopters? Did they recover any well, data? No. Well, they they were expected. Suddenly coming up slow. Right. They missed it. Oh, so they were aiming and, and thinking, you know, rocket, slow yeah, launch, yeah. and then it's going to go so faster. They're going to have this thing, to film. This thing just leaps Boop, into yeah. the air and then continues yeah. to accelerate. Well, I bet you see the color photo. You see that the air, the force, it ripples up down yes, from the ground. Things in the background look like they're just flying apart. That's correct. Yeah. We we do see that in the John Searle story. That's the one photo yeah. of the disc rising yes. and that that diffused. Uh, uh, that diffused air, yes. That's actually a tower that Behind is diffused it, yeah. because of the violence right. of this yeah. launch. Yeah. That's the a air, fascinating the feet, photo. The air is moving, yes. causing the pilot in a way the background to fly apart. And so those photos are from this event that you're talking yes, about. Yes. Fascinating. Now, it's up in three minutes, it's over in three minutes. Where does it go from there? Did you bring back it back? Back to the site. You brought it back. Down. Yes. And then brought it back down. Back down, yes. And now, the problem was, the pilot said paying here 60 pounds put on each of them, 60 pounds the helicopter. per hour, yes, yes. for their time. Had no time to capture the pitch, the flight pitch. Now, I'd warn BBC, that would be the case, but they didn't believe me. So now that's interesting. You mentioned BBC. Now, now this, this is part of the news. You you are yeah. basically talked about on a regular basis by the BBC, by yeah. ITV, yeah. by magazines, by newspapers. 
Gates. They're coming to interview Searle. They're coming to, I understand they're coming to see uh, the Demo One. Tell, uh, tell about the Demo One. Well, th what happened was I, I proposed to 400 scientists at a meeting on a Sunday in Mortimer, St. John's Hall, about my idea of a manned flight craft. They said that that's a split beam system. It would never fly. It would not even support itself. Well, let's, uh, hold on there. You, you said manned craft. Now you're you're talking in the in the mid mid 60s to the to the 70s. Mm -hmm. Now you're thinking about getting in this thing and flying somewhere. Yep. Yes. And and it would simply require a pressurized cabin, apparently. Yes. So you're going to actually get in it and and go with these outrageous people. Well, what would happen to you if you got in one? and took off at that rate. Well, what has happened was that a number of flight tests, Bola has sent sensors to the engineer pit them in. That was to measure the loading of the structure. Oh, I see. So in your models, you were, you were putting instruments inside yeah. to measure the activity should you be in it at one time. So you planned all along to get aboard and go somewhere. Oh, yes. There was no question about it. Uh, the press could see clearly well, even the doctor came in and said, that's, you're in space work. Oh, no. No, we're just going to do radio TV repairs. They went away. Then the midwife came, and the first thing she said, you, you're in space work. Oh, no, we're doing radio repairs. And when the news hit the paper, they came back. We knew that was space work that you were doing. You know, we didn't really believe that was raging and tell because it looked so much like NASA. And that's all that equipment and all the oh, yes. all the stuff that. Yes. Now, how how was it okay with the authorities that you had? Some of this stuff must have been illegal to have, wasn't it? Well, oh yes, we used the transmitter was at eleven fifty four. And everyone had to use the same one. Eleven fifty-four. Yeah. Now that what is it? Cycles per second? Or? One thousand cycles. One thousand four hundred cycles. Now per this second. is the radio beam that you needed to stay ahead of the speed of yeah. the craft. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, it was a cheap uh, project to buy. Right. Now the receiver was the R one one four five. Now that I set on top, so you could hear. The signals that was coming back from it, so you knew that it was still operating when you set it off on a run. The people that would see it first, they would also now begin to pick up the signal, mm -hmm. which they'd been told to listen for. Well, that brings a story to mind in the film. Now, you, you mentioned something about Blackbush Airport, that, that apparently you parked a craft in the sky, that it was hovering there for a period of time, and, and because of its intense emissions, it was messing with the radio traffic of incoming and outgoing aircraft. Is this true? Well, the pair, yes. A craft, one of my craft landed up at Blackbush area. Well, no, airport. wait, you said landed. Was it actually Not landed? Land, no, it, when I say landed, that means it arrived at that point, and it shouldn't have been there. Well, what do you arrive now? W arrived where? Where was well, it? Well, it was supposed to be going through Eastley and around and come back through Mortimer area. Right. And then on again back to what the White uh, Island of White and down to Portugal. Right. And that, where hands were waiting. So you Some had bodies a... put the wrong signal ah. out. So you had and, a flight pattern error. Yeah. And it ended up, now, what are we, we're talking about is parked in the sky? Yes, it was parked. What happened is I got a phone call. Can you please remove your craft? Because it's <laughs> interfering with radio communication. Who called you? At the airport, the, the um, air tower. The and they tower. knew to call you? Yeah, they called me, just asked me to remove it. And because, it, well, it's stopping communication to aircraft landing. But they knew it was a Searle disc. Oh, yes, because they had seen pictures of, you know, that I had posted around. So they knew right away that they saw it, it was Searle. Then they said to me, oh, we're going to inform the press about it. So, oh, good, fair enough. Then the press came on to me about an hour later. Is it true that Blackbush rung you up to move your craft? I said, yes. 
But what happened, I saw it's been moved now. I've intercepted and moved it. Oh, well, that will be in uh, tomorrow's paper. So I got all the papers and I was shot. It said UFO over Blackbush Airport interfering with raid, incoming radio signals from landing aircraft. Wait a minute, it said UFO? Yeah. Why, why didn't it, why didn't it, why did they not say Searle Disc or, or, or but, UFO? But the airport told them, the press reporter, they didn't then know the what? press reporter obviously were told not to mention Searle uh -huh. Disc. Uh, yeah. a UFO. But this wasn't a UFO at all. No. This was a Searle yeah. disc in what year? Man, well, I think it said, uh, man, uh, 57. In 1957. No, and John, and you, you know, we, we're running up the hour here. We've gone a little bit over, and so, you know, we've got to cut it off. Unfortunately, this just is an amazing interview. And it's it's such a uh, a mind blower to know this technology has been out for that long and hasn't come out, you know, for the good of the people. So well, uh, great, James. I'm, we'll let you wrap it up. Yeah. So so basically, uh, what is the best way to get a hold of that uh, DVD, and how can people learn more about the story? Oh goodness, uh, the John Searle Story dot com. Very simple. J o h n s e a r l s t o r y dot com. And for further information, I suggest the Searle Effect dot com, uh, Searle Effect S E A R L E F F E C T dot com. That's our wonderful John A. Thomas in Rochester. Uh, you can look at Searle Solution, S E A R L S O L U T I O N dot com, uh, and of course Swallow Command, the wonderful Swallow Command. Mm -hmm. Uh, S W A L L O W command dot com. And uh, you know, I, I wish you all the luck in the world in, in uh, continuing and getting this uh, information and this technology out. And and again, thank John, you, uh, I can't thank you enough for your work as well. Uh, keep up the, you, the awesome work, and and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on the air again real soon. Thank you, James. All right. Have a good evening. Bye now. Bye. All right, boy, I wish I could have gone longer, but we're out of time. An amazing story, and, you know, you know where to get the rest of the story. So this is James Gunn with As You Wish Talk Radio signing off. Have a great evening. Good night.